Okay. Today we're doing this really cool cloth simulation. So we're going to create a new file. And the first thing we're going to do is add a plane. So now we want to scale it on the x axis. Let's say this size I think is good. Or maybe a little bit more. And then you can apply the scale. It's this step is really important, so make sure you do this. So now we're going to add a modifier, and this is going to be the array modifier. So, yeah, if we go here and try to put in the Z, it won't work because it doesn't even have a Z axis. If we look from the side view, we cannot see it. So, what we there's two options. One is to add a solidify, and we're going to do that after. And the other one is to add the object offset instead of the relative offset. So now we're going to add an empty. So I'm going to choose the plane axis because it's the best one in my opinion. And we're going to select the empty. We can rename this however you like. So it can be called the array because it controls the array modifier. And now what we can do, just look from a little bit off from the side like this and bring it on the Z. Hold shift and it will be better. So another thing we will do is just scale a little bit down because it, it will be better at the end. So now we can make this all the way to a big number. And if you're finding it hard to see this, you can come here and then add cavity and then both and add put out on the max. This will help you see it. So you can bring this all the way up if you want. But I think 10 is a good number because it already has a lot and it won't take that long. Or maybe even 12. Yeah, I think that's good now. Okay, so what we're going to do now is actually add the cloth modifier. But before we add, if we add right now, we will see I just remove this that it will happen. It like it will be super laggy because this will move like in a weird way, and we don't have any vertices here, so it will just be really weird. So what we have to do is go here and press Control R, R and then go up until you get a good amount of sub subdivisions and then we're going to select out and subdivide so we have at least one over here so the next thing we're going to do is add here a subdivision modifier and you can put a sample I'll keep it at one right now and that will give a, another subdivision but then we can change this one as we're going through. So now, the other thing we need to do is just to come here and add the cloth. But the thing that will happen if we press play now, nothing, it just falls to the void. And we don't want that. So let's go here and put the field waves, the gravity all the way to zero. And then the collisions, we need to add self collision. Because, well, I think you understood why. So now if we press play, nothing happens again. And I think you know why. Because now it doesn't even move because the gravity isn't here. So something we need to add is a force field. So you can come here. You can add whatever you want. But the one I used on the render was the vortex. So we can rotate it on the X now. I'll just bring it here so we can see it better. And let's just press play and see what happens. That's not much happening. So we can put the strength maybe up to 10. You just need to mess around with it. And yeah. Here we got the, the simulations already. Good. Oh yeah, that's good. So, but one thing we can do still. I think we need more subdivision. 
but don't put this um, the maximum because after it is going to have another subdivision so it's actually two subdivisions that we're going to add so let's just look at this now so one thing you need to keep in mind is the more vertices you put in the heavier this object is going to be so if you made it like a wind a wind force field coming from down up then that's not going to work really well be if you add more subdivisions so keep in mind the subdivision before the cloth makes it change the simulation too so i think that was too much over there that i put it so i'm going to put one because i don't want that much detail like it was before and it and i think now now we're getting some cooler results I think maybe I'm even going to change this to zero and put this to two and see what happens again. And I think maybe this is too much. So now it's just the time that you keep changing all the values and see what happens. If you see it's playing the same thing a lot of times, you can change the quality steps to six and then to five and that's going to refresh it. Oh, that's different. If you like this way, you can keep it, but I don't like it. So I'm going to bring it up to 8 maybe. And you can keep messing around with this until you find somewhere that you like. It can be in the front of the simulation or in the start. But just find somewhere that you really like. So now i'm just going to go back over here i really like when it's squishing in so i think i'll keep right here and because it's a um, thumbnail and you want to see what is on the thumbnail so now that we got this we can shade this move that will look way better and then we can choose the camera position so i'm going to uh, shift the camera and then just find a cool position and press Control alt number pad zero I think I need to stop saying that. Oh, okay. Didn't work. So I'm just going to put it right here. Like this, maybe. I think that was. That's really close what it was in the thumbnail. So we need to do something else now. We just add the materials. This is really boring to look at. And if we look like this, it doesn't really work. You can choose Eevee with ambient occlusion and maybe screen is place of factions but i will use cycles because come on it just look way better so now we're going to the shading and i'm on blender 4.0 so this will be a little bit hard for you if you're another version because the principal bsdf is so weird i don't know if you liked it but i prefer the old one if it had all of these the all of these weight and stuff like this sliders right will be i think it will be better so now we can change the color of it and i'll put at the red this pinkish red like this and then maybe all the way to orange or just red that's just red and everything but if you change so i'm on the sheen right here if you change the tint, it won't make any difference because what you have to do is put the weight up. So in Eevee, that doesn't make much of a difference. I also in cycles because it, it just you can see more of it. So if I put the weight all the way up, you can see it's kind of changing color. But I think we need some lights. <laughs> So I'm just going to remove the scene lights and scene worlds. So it will be like the world in Eevee. So now it looks way better. I think we just need to change this color so you can see better what's happening here. So the roughness is how much it spread out. And the weight is how much is in there. So I think this value is good because it shows right here. So this is the same as the is a layer weight but in the principal bsdf if you're wondering so now i'm going to change this back to uh 
orange. Yeah, I think that looks good. Maybe more, more weight. Yeah, you just keep messing around the values and it will look good. So now for the lights. The lights are really hard to get, but I learned the tip. Something that you want to do is get the rim, uh, a rim right here. So let me sh just show you. So right over here, you want to get a little bit of light, like almost white, in my opinion, is good. And then I like to put one light looking from down up and maybe another one right here so just so you see i'm just going to add it i use area lights for this if you're wondering so first i'm going to add the principal light which is going to light everything up not everything but it's going to make most of the light and like the focus point of the scene so we can make it pretty bright i'll just change the world so totally black so that's getting not all the things so we can keep looking pressing zero at the camera to see how it's looking like it will look different at the angle that you look at so just be careful <laughs> with this and another light that we need is coming from down so it doesn't be completely it won't be completely black over here in the bottom so just take the second light that's the second light and then illuminate the bottom of it so we don't want it to illuminate that much because now it looks like this it's just too much on the thing so without it it looks like this and then we just want a little bit and i think it's coming too much from the side i want to come more from the front so i think like this maybe I think we need to move it like this. So it depends on your scene, on what you're doing. And you just need to move them around and see what happens. That's what I do. So I think the other light, the big one, needs more. And this one, it's getting a little bit hard to make it good because we need to find a place where it's good. So we can keep it like this. I think it makes even more sense this to be the full, the principal light. And this is just a rim right there. And then we want the black over here to appear. So we don't want that much light. But I'm just going to put the other light so you don't have to wait me for your ages. So this one is coming from the back. Do you see this? Line right this over here where my mouse is, so we just want a rim light that's how it's called, and I think you know why it's just a rim over here. You can put this really strong, and then the only one that I, I'm not liking right now is this one. We need to find somewhere good, and if you're not enjoying to keep moving around, like eat. The, from the camera to the light every time we can put another 3d view power here and then this one we change the light it can be a little confusing when you first use it but then it'll get better and i think that's finally good lights take up a lot of time you could have skipped that part if you don't do much of the lights but then now on the color management i'm going to put at AGX this should be default right now for you but I think it's already here and then we can change it to like punchy maybe or high contrast you can just click a random one and see which one you enjoy the most so I like the from medium high contrast up but then I think it's too much in this time in this one the punchy is too much and the grayscale is just gray so you just keep messing with this i think base contrast is good and then this lighter is just like the normal exposure in your cell phone maybe i don't know if you have a cell phone or not because i don't 
and that makes totally sense for me but okay let's just come back here and to the render settings so the other thing we want to do is put the my max symbol I don't know who uses this much I still don't know who uses 4,000 samples for an animation okay, that's so much so maybe 32 is good I know we use 32 for still images and then the output I like to put 4k because it just is 4k and if you're wondering is this one that I use normally yeah 4k is always good for the, this kind of render if you want you can still add more subdivision but I don't think it will make much of the difference now and then make sure the render is equal to this one and yeah that's everything if you want to, want to render the animation if your computer is fast you can choose the over here and then put add fm fmpeg video and then go to encoding and then mpeg4 but then if your computer you think it will take more than one day to render everything you can just go to png and then you press ctrl f12 but I'm just going to do a still image. I hope this tutorial isn't more than I wanted to. So after you render everything, it'll probably look good. And another thing, you really just need to make sure that your um, over here in the subdivision needs to be equal. So I'm going to remove this subdivision. So you saw it there it was wrong and then your render is going to look really bad it won't look like a cloth it will just look messy but that's it for today guys i hope you enjoyed and i'll see you guys in the next video